Jerry Jordan. Welcome. We're very happy to see you and have you, Mr. Jordan. Thank you very much, Councilwoman, and thank you so much for the opportunity to be here this morning. I first want to take a moment to express on behalf of the members, staff, and the executive board of the PFT how much our thoughts are with the C.W. Henry family. I had the opportunity to be there this morning when the children returned to school today, and I am happy to report that it was a very, very, very smooth, normal opening for the children. The principal and the staff uh, did a tremendous job, and they are prepared to do everything they can to support the children, and there are a lot of support personnel present in order to provide counseling and other support for the children and staff at Henry. So I felt very confident when I left that today is going to be a great day for the children at the Henry School. Thank you for letting us know and know that this council is ready to offer any support we possibly can. Thank you. But the incident at C.W. Henry School serves as a reminder of how important it is for our school children to have access to counselors, nurses, and school staff that can guide them through the trauma of incidents like these. In previous years, I've come before you and I've presented a laundry list of challenges facing Philly's students and educators. Unfortunately, this list hasn't significantly shortened and there is one item that has grown into a huge distraction for our city's teachers and school staff. Today marks the 1,355th day without a new PFT contract. I know that Superintendent Height has publicly expressed his sense of urgency to arrive at a new tentative agreement as soon as possible. Unfortunately, our negotiations, while ongoing, remain very, very slow when it comes to any kind of progress. We have spoken many times about the lack of a new contract and how it's impacting on the morale of educators and driving out many of our educators from the district. Last week, we shared with you the results of a survey of PFT members about the impact of this unacceptably long period without a new contract. After five years without a raise, members find themselves unable to plan for the future. Many are working second jobs to make ends meet, and about half are actively looking for employment outside the district. And about 75% have indicated that their stagnant paychecks and increasing personal expenses have forced them to reduce their spending on classroom supplies for their students. This is a huge issue and one that the PFT has been speaking on for the past several years. There is absolutely no way a Philly classroom can be adequately stocked on a mere $100 per year allotment provided by the district. And educators buy more than just school supplies for their students. Many buy food, clothing, and other essential items that their students are often lacking. City Council has done a great deal to increase public school funding at the local level, and we thank you. You have also been a tremendous ally as you've joined us in the call for a new PFT contract. Today, I ask that you continue to stand with Philly's educators in these efforts. For our part, we will continue to hold rallies, demonstrations, and other activities to call attention to this issue. Today, we are also delivering a petition signed by over 2,000 educators and community members to Mayor Kenny and Governor Wolf. The petition calls on these leaders to tell the district to put the $65 million in new annual revenue towards settling a new contract. 
Our members have dealt with five years of frozen salaries and growing instability. It's time to show Philly's educators the respect and appreciation they deserve. After five years without a raise, the right thing to do is to use the new revenue generated by the reassessment of real estate taxes to invest in the men and women who educate our children. We fully understand that deep fiscal concerns are at the root of many challenges facing our schools, and that is largely due to the state's inadequate and inequitable funding formula for public education. A report from the Education Law Center demonstrates that because of lower real estate values, poorer school districts in cities like Philly, Chester, and Reading have significantly less to spend on public schools than wealthier Pennsylvania districts. In 2014, a study by Power shows even deeper disparities when race is factored in. Districts that serve large minority populations receive less state funding than districts that serve mostly white students. Governor Wolf has made strides toward increasing Pennsylvania's public school spending, but without restoration of the nearly $1 billion in funding cut by the Corbett administration, it will be years before districts like Philadelphia see significant gains in funding. Until we can restore the lost funds or dramatically increase funding levels, Philly's children will never have the same, same access to art, music, clubs, athletics, and other programs and services available to students in our neighboring suburbs. The outlook for Philadelphia is even bleaker when you consider the charter, voucher, and anti-worker legislation being pushed by some legislators in Harrisburg. The PFT has been pushing for more funding and against anti-public education legislation, but we can't do it alone. We need City Council to join us when we write letters and visit our Pennsylvania representatives and senators. We appreciate the decisions made by this body to bring more revenue to our schools and hope that we can count on you to keep fighting alongside the PFT to give teachers and school employees the support, compensation, and respect that's been lacking for the past 1,355 days. Thank you. Thank you very much, and certainly, um all of us in City Council are looking forward to having a contract settled, and we have so many folks come down here, you know, have children of our own, our staff does as well, and so we're certainly 1,000% with you on trying to uh, get a contract. Boy, but those are many, many days, huh? That's right. Thank yeah. you. So you can count on that. Are there any uh, questions or comments? Councilwoman Gam. Thank you very much, Madam Chair, and thank you so much, uh, President Jordan, for coming in here to um, present on this issue. One of uh, the questions, in addition to helping us understand better the importance of the teacher's contract, and one of the things that I know we've worked on together is to highlight uh, what happens when teachers don't have a contract. And a lot of that is not only based on just salaries and wages, but the fact that we're losing teachers um, by, uh, by levels that we can't necessarily replenish. And I'm wondering if you can speak a little bit to the work that the PFT has done around addressing issues of teacher vacancies. We've been tracking them, obviously, um, but the importance and recognition that the contract is uh, also um, contributing perhaps to the teacher vacancy situations. Um, and also in particular for us, a couple of things that we noticed is that in specialized fields in particular, so special education, um, speech and occupational therapy, we are really, really struggling to fill those positions without a contract because those are highly desirable, uh, specialized um, educators who have the opportunity to go elsewhere. And I was wondering if you could just help us talk through a little bit about how the impact has been on teacher staffing in schools. Thank you, Councilwoman. The uh, instability that 
is in the system as a result of the lack of a contract uh, causes uh, teachers who apply for positions to apply in other districts where there is some stability. People are not able to plan their lives, the lives of, for, of their family, and they really need to know. In Philadelphia, I have talked to a number of uh, our young teachers who have said uh, that they are not able to plan their families because of the lack of a contract and that their wages are stagnant. Uh, Philadelphia is certainly far behind many of the surrounding, about 67 surrounding school districts in uh, the uh, salaries. We have been for a while. However, uh, by not having received any kind of wage increases for the last five years and for the new teachers who are hired, when they come to Philadelphia, they are told that they will earn additional money according to the number of years that they serve in the school district. They get something called an increment. Year one salary, the year two salary is a little bit higher because of a small increase. Year three salary is a bit higher until they reach the maximum step, which is step 11. And for the last four years, those steps have been frozen as well, so the teachers are not getting those. And as a result, they're leaving. Mm -hmm. As you know, uh, large, the majority of my membership uh, are women. They're young women, and many of them have children. I don't have to tell any of you the expense of childcare and what that cost a family when they need to have uh, put a child, one or two or, or more children in childcare every month. And without being able to depend on uh, step increases as well as uh, wage increases, it's causing us to lose a lot of teachers. Teachers and other educators who are in what we call high needs areas, such as math, science, world languages, um, speech pathologists, uh, we are competing with the surrounding districts for those teachers. And um, I guess a couple of months ago, I saw a flyer announcing a recruitment drive that the suburban districts uh, are having, they were having, and they were particularly going after being able to increase the number of minority teachers in their districts. And so they were coming, and they sent them into Philadelphia schools to teachers because they want our teachers. What uh, I've been told by administrators who've left Philadelphia and have taken on superintendents' positions in other districts, what they say is that if you can get a teacher from Philadelphia, you've got a great teacher because Philly teachers know how to teach with very little and they can make very little look like it's a lot. And they're very talented. So not only are we having trouble with recruiting teachers, we're having trouble with retaining them, and now the surrounding districts are recruiting the minority teachers, and we have a really low number of minority teachers in the Philadelphia school district now. And it certainly will not, this lack of a contract does not help in being able to attract minority teachers to come, much less stay. Well, thank you very much, and I appreciate the work that the union has done to highlight the impact on teachers, and especially uh, teachers who've had to take second jobs. I can't tell you the number of times that I've been out um, just, you know, kind of living my own personal life and come across a teacher who's either, uh, you know, waiting a table or working an extra job at uh, a hardware store or all these other places. And it is, it is really upsetting. And I think I um, speak for the majority of my council members who believe that the, the teachers in our city deserve a fair contract and that we'll be supporting that all the way. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilman Dom. Thank you, Madam Chairman, and good morning. Good morning. I have some questions that you might not be able to answer, and I respect that if you can't answer them, please don't answer, okay? Um, you know, I looked up the definition of negotiation, okay? 
because this has been going on for five years. And my understanding of negotiation is basically the bargaining give and take process between two or more parties, uh, each with its own aims and needs and viewpoints, seeking to discover common ground and reach an agreement to settle a matter of mutual concern or resolve a conflict. That's the definition of negotiation. In that context, I, I think that we started this process with one side on one end of the spectrum and another side on the other end of the spectrum. At the present time, are we much closer or are we still that distant apart? I would say, Councilman, that, um, you know, I, I will answer it this way, that the Federation is prepared to settle the contract today. However, uh, just as you uh, said when you described the definition of negotiations, uh, the district is the other player in this, and whether or not uh, they're willing to take the many of their demands off the table to make it happen, that I can't uh, speak to. And so I don't know the process that you're going through, but if we sought outside professional mediators to assist us in this process in order to get to the conclusion of a contract? I don't know that we need outside mediators to do that. Uh, I think those of us who are at the table on both sides uh, can do it. We've done it many times before, and it's just a matter of, uh, as you said, it's two sides. One side can't get all that they want, and the other side can't either. I'm just going to tell you, though, in the business world, I know it's different in the education world. If we had an argument or a negotiation that lasted five years, okay, at some point in time during that five-year period, we would have gone to a professional mediation service. And in fact, the courts in Philadelphia send you to professional mediation before they even take you into court and to resolve a situation. I'm just suggesting it as a way to have the two parties come together and conclude, because I can't imagine a new teacher wanting to teach in the city of Philadelphia with no contract for five years and no raises has to be extremely difficult to hire quality teachers in this environment. You're absolutely correct, and it's not only difficulty in hiring uh, new teachers, but it's, there's a big problem in retaining the current teachers that we have, okay. because they don't want to remain. They will go to another district where they are able to get A, a higher salary, and B, know they have a contract and that they're going to get uh, additional compensation. And so we um, may not be able to answer this question, but I'm going to put it point blank. For example, if five years ago the school board or source school district was offering $100 million, I'm picking these numbers out of the air, and the teachers were looking for $500 million, are today we're closer to the middle point or not? Well, I really can't answer it because you can't cost the contract out until you cost all of the items. and. Uh, as a result of it, we have a lot of big issues that are uh, big ticket items yet to be resolved. One last question. Is the delta or difference between where the two, si two sides are greater than 50 million? I can't answer that because uh, uh, big ticket items such as benefits and wages are unresolved. So until you can resolve those, I can't, you know, give you a cost. So we don't know right now if the difference is 50 million or 100 million or 200 million. No. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. You're we welcome. wish you what all of us want this thing to be resolved. So. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you very much, Councilman Taubenberger. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. Jordan, thank you for coming this morning. Your input is, I think, very, very important for the process. I also want to thank you and your leadership team at the PFT for always caring about our children and putting them first. Because I know uh, in your actions and your words, and I've seen you many times in schools, that's the forefront of this. And that's what we you know, need to do. And it's appreciated. Thank you for your kind words. Your, 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 your actions this morning to be with the children that had this traumatic incident is important. It didn't have to be there, but you were there. So noted. Do you have a sense of what the attrition rate actually is, or uh, approximately? We're losing teachers every year. We can't fill the slots because we're 
having difficulty attracting teachers. I mean, if you don't have a contract, many times, why would you go when you have all these other opportunities? But the actual attrition rate, do you have a sense of what that might be in a year's time? Uh, about 30%. That's significant. Yes, it is. Yeah. I, I think. And uh, it goes up to about 50% over five years. Well, these are, these are things I think the, the public needs to know, and I'm, that's why I'm asking as well. So. It's, you know, it's very costly, and it's also costly to recruit because Correct. a city the size of Philadelphia, Philadelphia has to spend probably somewhere in the area of about $12,500 per teacher they recruit. So it's actually costing us even more money because of the current situation. Yes, that's when you right. look at large cities like Philadelphia, New York, Chicago, uh, that, that, that's about the and I, I think I'm on the low end right. when, okay. uh, you know, quoting what the research shows regarding a recruitment cost. Mr. Jordan, thank you. Madam Chair, thank you very much. Thank you, Councilman. Councilwoman Parker. Thank you, Madam Chair, and hello. It's good to see you. Good morning. Uh, I am uh, reading your testimony. And uh, I'm looking at your reference to the restoration of the nearly uh, one billion in cuts that were made uh, by the Corbett uh, administration, um, and uh, fortunately for me, I've uh, you know had the, the the great honor of working with you and um, teachers and legislators, uh, you know, across our region in advocating for funding. And, and while we were successful in some areas and getting through some uh, some 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 battles, um, the war. It's still very difficult, and we know that one of the, the main highlights um, that Philadelphia suffered from the most during those cuts was the charter school reimbursement, and I'm not sure if you addressed this. Tell me, uh, if you will, from your perspective, um, ha have we had any communication? And I know when you're advocating, you work with other teachers uh, in other regions, and Philadelphia is not, although we're the largest, we're not the only district um, that that charter school reimbursement could have been sub supportive um, of. Ha what, what is it like for other regions? And, and what's the tone in Harrisburg? Is that off the table from your perspective? I have not heard anyone, uh, when I say anyone, any of the uh, elected officials talking about restoring the uh, charter school reimbursement, which for Philadelphia I think was about $115 million, uh, which is significant. And uh, that, again, when talking about the uh, billion dollars in cuts, that's part of uh, what led to that uh, number. Mm -hmm. And um, it certainly would help if we could get a charter school reimbursement um, because Philadelphia has the largest number of charter schools in the uh, Commonwealth. Uh, and there are a number of districts that are uh, now really having some financial problems because of the expansion of the charter schools in their district. And when that, as you know, uh, Councilwoman, uh, having worked in the legislature, when Governor Rendell proposed the charter school reimbursement, it was to help offset the expenses that school districts face as a result of uh, the charter schools that they have. I thank you, and I appreciate um, your, your response. And my hope is that we will find a way through uh, the current negotiations to uh, not make charter school reimbursement that line item a thing in the past, but that we will continue to uh, put it in the forefront of our advocacy um, for the funding for public education while we're in Harrisburg. Uh, the next issue I wanted you to comment on, and you mentioned it uh, briefly in response to two questions, was the issue regarding teacher recruitment um, and retention. And a major issue for me, um, particularly in the School District of Philadelphia, has been the presence of minority teachers, particularly African American males. I've talked about this with the school district when they were in front of us last year, I think I mentioned it um, again this year, but am I correct in hearing you that the very few minority teachers that we have in the school district of Philadelphia are being heavily 
courted by our suburban partners or other others in our region because if we're saying we need to bolster our efforts to recruit and retain more minority teachers, again, particularly African-American males, but now we are potentially losing them due to the heavy recruiting activity of those outside of our district. Could you comment on that? Yes. Um, our number of minority teachers has decreased, uh, and you know there are just so many reasons as to why. Uh, certainly, and you mentioned black males specifically, if, you're a black male who is the head of a household. Uh, the starting salary for teachers is not that high. And then when a teacher has to spend the amount of money that our teachers have been spending out of their pockets to buy paper and uh, other supplies for their classrooms as well as food and clothing for their children when they see that other children um, don't have, are not getting enough to eat. You know, there are a number of teachers in a number of schools mm -hmm. who uh, know that when there is a three-day weekend that uh, they need to have extra food stuff on their desk so that the kids will be able to take it with them. Or when they come in on a Monday after, or a Tuesday after a long weekend, um, they want to have food stuff on their desk so that kids can just go up to the desk and take something because we don't know, you know, or we do know that many of them did not get um, enough food during that time. Mm -hmm. So that comes out of a teacher's pocket. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and then there are other, you know, just working conditions in general that really cause uh, teachers to leave. Uh, you know, we're in a period now in this country that uh, there are jobs that minorities males particularly could not, black males and black females, could not get uh, 40, 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. They are now available. And so people are leaving. And uh, as the suburban <coughs> districts are um, heavily recruiting minorities because they're looking for a diverse uh, workforce. And so they come to Philadelphia and they're offering uh, you know, them more money and uh, better working conditions. We're going to make sure you have books and paper and supplies and um, a better salary. So, you know, we are competing with the surrounding uh, school districts. Well, I just wanted to uh, note for the record, and I know my time is uh, up, and you actually addressed my, my third and final question, which was the, an issue surrounding teacher resources, uh, and you talked about that. Um, I want to thank the teachers in the school district of, of Philadelphia for their work. Um, in addition to that, the resources that teachers uh, spend uh, out of pocket. You know, one, we used to have a, a store uh, in Willow Grove Mall, and it is, uh, it is slipping my mind right now, but it was the teacher store. It has since closed, and now we have to go across the bridge because I find yes. myself with a four-year-old now. It's no longer, I see other te teachers in there when I go, but I now have to go uh, to those stores, and um, they're not being reimbursed for most of what they spent, and I just wanted no. to uh, state that for the record. You know, I, I'm always looking for happy compromise. Uh, my hope is that, I know it's been five years, but um, I am confident that um, hammering at the table, your commitment, your leadership, along with that of the district that, that we can get there. And um, so thank you all so very much for what you do. Thank you. We have to get there. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, Councilman O. Thank you very much, Chairwoman. Um, good morning. Thank you for being good morning. here. Um, I do have questions, uh, really just if you know the answer. Um, Prior to the charter schools, uh, I'm, I'm assuming that the number of PFT members was uh, larger than it is today. Is that correct or incorrect? That is correct. And so I think there's about 88 charter schools. And are any of the charter school teachers members of the PFT? No. None? None. Okay. There are, however, some charter school teachers who are members of our state affiliate. Okay, so in the bargaining process now with the SRC or the school district, um, 
as you bargain, do you represent the teachers that are represented by the state union or just the teachers that are members of the PFT? Uh, I just need to be clear on uh, your reference to the state union. Do you mean the uh, AFT Pennsylvania? Yes. Do I bargain for them? Yeah, or do they bargain separately or does nobody bargain for them? They bargain separately. Okay. The PFT has nothing to do uh, with the uh, charter school teachers. Okay. The state handles that if they belong to the state organization. And is it correct that generally the pay scale within Philadelphia um, is set by the salary that the public school teachers receive? Is that kind of a benchmark or is that not true? The salaries are negotiated. Okay, so my, my question is while the salaries are negotiated, for example, if the PFT members get higher pay, does that have kind of a domino effect of some sort or it just doesn't have any effect in the salary environment here in Philadelphia for the public schools, public charter schools too? Um, I, uh, Councilman, I can't speak okay, to the salary structure for uh, charter schools. I'm okay. just not involved and I'm not familiar with how they okay. do it. Yes, thank you. I just, I'm just trying to get some information. Um, <clears throat> Over the five years, and I understand you're in negotiations now, but but it has been five years. Is it, um, is it that, it, it must be that far of a uh, divide between the school district and the PFT to have gone on for five years without reaching a contract. Is that correct or is there something different than, than just very far apart on important issues? Well, certainly, uh, you know, you're not going to negotiate a contract without resources. And uh, you certainly um, know the school district's resources. And um, there are, you know, other issues that are discussed in negotiations that are um, non-economic issues as well. So between the two, I mean, those are topics that are always discussed uh, at negotiations and have to be resolved. Is there uh, any discussion about um, under the work environment um, a, a standard of equity in all public neighborhood schools? I understand there's magnet schools and they have uh, a somewhat of a different set of standards depending on what the, whether it's uh, music or academics, but in terms of just neighborhood schools, is there a discussion with the SRC about ensuring that all schools are equally resourced? Are equally? Resourced. Uh, that is just an expectation. I mean, that uh, I believe very strongly, and I'm the product of Philadelphia's neighborhood schools. Uh, I did not attend a magnet school. I, went, I graduated from West Philadelphia High School. And uh, it was very well resourced when I was a student. And I believe that all of the neighborhood schools should be very well resourced because uh, children deserve it, and parents who send their children to the neighborhood school should, uh, you know, get every opportunity for their children to get a good education in a neighborhood school. There should not be uh, various tiers, uh, in my opinion. Well, I agree with you. My question is, does that get handled like between the SRC and some other place, or is that a point of negotiation with the PFT, or is that something that, that the PFT and its negotiation uh, does not focus on because it's focused on other things. It's policy that uh, is the responsibility of the School Reform Commission. They decide uh, how they're going to resource buildings and they decide what the uh, curriculum is going to be. They have unilateral uh, control of that. Thank you very much. I, I will come back later. And I think the state law uh, grants them that. Okay. Thank you very much, Chairwoman. Thank you. Councilman Green. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, um, Mr. Jordan, for your advocacy. Thank you for your support for 
the um, family at C.W. Henry for the unfortunate incident that occurred this week. Um, and thank you for your advocacy as a leader um, for the Philadelphia Federation of Teachers. And I think all members of this body are wishing and hoping for a quick resolution to your contract negotiations um, with the district. Uh, and looking at your testimony, um, and this is somewhat of a follow-up to the questions that Councilman Parker raised, and I noted that you referenced a report from the Education Law Center. And I'm curious from the perspective that you know, many of us are waiting, are waiting with almost bated breath for the Supreme Court decision regarding the Education Law Center's lawsuit. And some of the things that Councilman Parker raised and also you raised in your commentary that a number of districts around the Commonwealth have been impacted um, significantly by the end of the charter school reimbursement. Um, rural districts, urban districts, all around the Commonwealth have been impacted in that regard. Although we don't know the, what the outcome may be for the lawsuit, many of us have some hopes on where it may go. Have there been any conversations with you and other similar leaders um, with other school districts around the Commonwealth about how to prepare for um, what that Supreme Court case decision may be, and also any strategies if the Supreme Court says to the General Assembly, you, know, you need to file the fair funding formula under the Rendell administration or some other type of directive, how pressure can be put on the General Assembly to make sure dollars are directed back to both rural and urban school districts that can hopefully make up some of that lost money with the end of the charter school reimbursement. I have not had a great deal of, ex of discussions with uh, my colleagues in other districts, but what uh, the PFT has been doing is that we've been working as a part of the coalition uh, led by power, and uh, they have been doing some remarkable work. Uh, I do believe we'll be in uh, Harrisburg around June 21st uh, as a part of that coalition to push uh, forward on that same issue, and I think that Next week in Harrisburg, Senator Hughes, I think on the 23rd, is uh, having a coalition in Harrisburg uh, to discuss this issue of the lack of funding for our schools. And depending upon my calendar, I would like to be there. Right. I know you're you know, very focused on negotiating the contracts. I just think that could be an opportunity. I, I'm aware of the work that Power has been doing, especially with some of our Southeast PA um, counterparts, you know, Montgomery, Chester, Delaware um, counties, but I also think that a number of the rural counties, and you made reference to this in your earlier testimony as well as Councilman Parker, that a number of r rural counties are, have really been impacted significantly yes. by charter school reimbursements um, being eliminated. Some of these jurisdictions have had homeschooling, so what happened in the local school district was not as much of an impact, but now because of cyber charters, some of those same parents who were doing homeschooling are now doing cyber charter education for their children. They're also homeschooling, which is now having an impact on those rural school districts because those dollars are leaving that rural school district and going to that cyber charter. And it's a good possibility that cyber charter may be based in a urban area like a Philadelphia or Pittsburgh or, or Chester or Reading. So they're now having that impact. I just think there is an opportunity um, to bring a larger coalition too often Harrisburg. It's stated as a Philadelphia issue, that charter schools are a Philadelphia issue and concern, and it's become more of a commonwealth-wide issue. And I think, I think it does provide opportunity for people to put pressure on our members in the House and Senate to look at this fair funding formula issue and based on how the outcome of the Supreme Court decision may occur, can galvanize people at a local level across the commonwealth to say we need fair funding for all schools in the commonwealth, city of Philadelphia, Reading, Pike County, Lackawanna County, wherever. So hopefully, hopefully you have a speedy negotiation for your contracts um, and prior to the end of, um, prior to the decision being made and we'll have an opportunity to develop that larger coalition to get people to think about this is not just a issue for some school districts, but this is an issue for all school districts. Thank you, I hope so. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Councilman Dom. Thank you, uh, Madam Chairman. I have a couple other questions I wanted to ask, Jerry. Uh, and by the way, um, the school district, I think it was in last week or two weeks ago, I don't know if you saw, they mentioned in 2022, we could have a deficit of 700 million schools. 
And they also mentioned that the pension fund was 50 million neg uh, cont contributed in 2011, if I recall, and today it's close to 255 million, up 500 percent, and it's going higher than that. So I don't know. I, I, my, I guess one of my points is I want to make sure that we offer salaries to teachers. We also talk about the level of benefits that we offer, because I noticed in the city, for example, when we offer for every dollar of wage in city government, we pay 87.7 cents in benefits. So for ex example, and 37% overhead. When we offer a salary of 50,000, it's really 112. We offer a salary of 100, it's really 224. And my only purpose in mentioning this is because I want to make sure we explain to any new hires that it's not just the salary, it's also benefits that they're getting in that package that might be helpful. No, I understand that, and certainly that's uh, something that we, you know, we have to deal with at the table because yeah. we have to cost in more than salaries. We cost in the benefits cost. Uh, you mentioned the pensions and the, uh, uh, the statement by the district about the amount that they have to pay, but uh, I don't know if they told you that for 10 years they didn't uh, contribute to the pension fund at all. And that's why they're contributing the amount of money now because across the Commonwealth, school districts were given a pass while the educators continued to contribute the full amount to their pensions. Okay. And uh, on a different note, I visited last year 23 schools. And one of my concerns is how we uh, talk about schools and the teachers and the principals. So I'll just give you my perspective. Because my perspective of the 23 schools that I visited from S. Weir Mitchell to Spring Garden Elementary to Rowan Elementary, Webster, Hancock, George Washington Girls High, South Philly High, uh, Francis Scott Key, West Philadelphia, Lincoln Edison, Kennerton, George Mead, just to name a few. Every school I went into, I saw great teachers and I saw great principals. I didn't see one bad school out of 23. And I'm mentioning that because I think it's important that the media recognizes six issues a year of the school system that are maybe aren't so great, and that's played up. But we forget about all the great teachers and principals that are in the system, doing a great job every day. And I went into these classrooms, these teachers are doing a good job. And I want to make sure we tell the public that, because so many, especially young people, think they might have to move out of the city when their kids get to kindergarten, and they really don't. We have some really good schools. So I just wanted to put that on the record. And, I thank you for that, and uh, you, you know what I know and have been saying for a long time. And I listened to the list of schools that you mentioned, uh, they're neighborhood schools. And uh, there are miracles happening every day in our neighborhood schools because the teachers are fantastic, we've got some great administrators, and they do a great job for the children, and the kids are getting a good education. So, and I guess, I don't know, I, what I feel we need to do, and I've told this to the school district, and I would mention it to you too, is we need to talk more about the positives than the negatives, because the positives that I saw far outweigh the negatives, far outweigh. And I don't think any parent should feel they need to move to the suburbs because of the schools. I think the schools that I visited in all areas were excellent. I didn't find one school that I wouldn't attend if I wasn't going into kindergarten. Last question I have for you, I wanted to see your position. I asked Dr. Height last week. Financial literacy, you know, the Federal Reserve has a program where they'll teach teachers how to teach financial literacy. And I actually believe that the one way to take people out of generational poverty is to teach children from kindergarten to 12th grade, specifically kindergarten to sixth grade, financial literacy, how to save money, what is an interest rate, what is a mortgage, all those things that maybe we were taught by our parents, I'm not sure that's being taught in the school system today. How do you feel about committing to 10 schools next year where we have each teacher kindergarten to sixth grade or sixth grade to 12th, whatever the school is, committing to teaching financial literacy? I certainly am not uh, opposed to it without knowing what the program actually looks like and um, you know certainly the material would have to be grade appropriate because what you're going to teach a first grader is going to be very different from what you would teach a sixth grader but uh, it's something that young people need to uh, learn because they will need those skills for their entire lives. And just so you know, uh, this is not something we're going to ask the city or the school district for the money to do the 10 schools. We're going to raise the money through private companies and uh, charities to do this. I have commitments from several. I'm committed to doing four schools myself. 
So I just need the teachers and the school district to work with us. It sounds good. Okay, thank you. Thank you very thank much, you. Madam Chairman. It does sound good. Uh, Councilwoman Gim. Here. Um, so I think we've talked a lot about how important the teacher's contract is to ensuring things that a lot of parents need. So a lot of us as parents often have felt that we don't have clear legal rights with the district, but the few rights that we do have are actually guaranteed to us through the teacher's contract. So for example, the question of a counselor um, and the importance of having full-time counselors in schools was in part coming out of the fact that that was guaranteed within the former PFT contract. Um, <clears throat> we were able to win, thanks to your help and to a broad ranging coalition of folks who've been pushing for a long time, the commitment to have nurses and counselors back into schools. We've been pushing on lower class size, ending leveling and split grades. Um, but we're also particularly interested in counseling and behavioral and climate supports for high need schools and to not have an enrollment based approach towards how we staff our schools, but to also have uh, you know, like a baseline of enrollment, but on top of that to make sure it's needs based and responsive. Has there been any discussion at all about <clears throat> making sure the teacher's contract more goes into more depth about uh, staffing levels and the kind of staffing that we want around counselors or behavioral support specialists um, in, in particular schools? Uh, no, there has not been a uh, discussion about that. Uh, <clears throat> the district uh, believes that they will supply those services and they know best, but I certainly would like to have um, specificity uh, outlined in the contract in order to ensure it. And the reason I feel that it needs to be in the contract is because we've seen administrations come to Philadelphia, stay for four or five years and leave, and a new administration comes in with a different program. And uh, it's the only way that we can ensure that uh, the children and the schools will get certain services is that if it's in the contract, then it will occur. Um, you know, as I said in my uh, remarks earlier, that the kind of services that the children at the Henry School are getting right now. Should be available everywhere. <laughs> exactly. I mean, we shouldn't have to uh, do what the district is doing today, and I'm not criticizing it. I think the district has handled the Henry situation really perfectly, but that they're pulling psychologists from their regular duties to the Henry School. They're pulling counselors from other schools to the Henry School because you need those services there for those children. There's a need, uh, but that we need to have more of them. We need to have uh, some social workers in uh, many of our schools in order to assist the children and the families. Um. You know, I think that that's one of the areas. I know that right now the PFT and the district are working on, you know, finalizing uh, the contract. But as we start to look forward, I, I am also interested in working with you and others um, to more deeply look at the PFT contract as a way of guaranteed staffing in schools. It's been particularly distressing as a parent to see that the maximum capacity for class size, for example, which is 30, and, K to two or K to three, K to three, and then 33 and four to 12 is not considered or looked at as a maximum, but is actually looked at as a standard that teachers are distributed at the standard of. And if they happen to go over, there seems to be like very little consequence around that. So I'd love to figure that out. I think you'd have a lot of support from parents and others who want to see more behavioral specialists in our schools, especially in our high need schools guaranteed language access, librarians, nurses, um, more counselors in schools, not less, um, and particular guarantees about after school and before school care and programming. So. Absolutely, those are just so important and they're important for the community. They're important, uh, you know, you just talk, uh, touched on uh, after school care <laughs> and before school, uh, particularly for working uh, parents to, be, to know that they're 
child can be dropped off earlier and they can go to work and the child can stay later and uh, it really helps to save the parents from a child care issue as well as cost uh, and it really is good for the child. Thank you very much. Thank you very much as well. Councilman O. Thank you very much, Chairwoman. Um, when I asked about equity in the schools, art in every school, music in every school, uh, as opposed to art or music in some schools and not in other schools, that's, that you told me was something within the policy or the purview of the SRC, not really a part of the uh, PFT's uh, uh, labor contract negotiations or other things. <clears throat> it would seem to me that trying to deal with policy issues, accountability, transparency, um, and standards, such as ensuring a counselor or a nurse in every school, is not something that the contract is ideally suited for, but rather a charter change. Um, in other words, a charter change that reorients the duties and responsibilities of the school board and its administration. Um, are you aware of any bills that propose a charter change to the school district of Philadelphia? I am only aware of the bill that you introduced a couple years ago in this council. Have you had a chance to review that bill? I did. Uh, then. I'm I'm not asking you for opinion. No, I, did, I, I understand your negotiations I just, now. I did then. I just don't uh, remember all of the details. To your knowledge, is there any other bill proposing a charter change? Not that I'm aware of. Okay, so there's one. To your knowledge, one bill to change the governance structure of the school district of Philadelphia. That I'm aware of, yes. Okay. And I don't imagine there's too many other ways to change the governance structure, accountability, and transparency other than a charter change. It's a thing that council can do. It has no effect unless the state legislature agrees or the SRC agrees, for example. It basically, however, does lay out a plan, <clears throat> a methodology to providing equity in education in a more guaranteed uh, method, I would say. That's my opinion. I'm not asking for a response. I'm not trying to put you in a tough situation. But I will put you in I'm a tough situation. I'm accustomed to them, so it's okay. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> the SRC, as you negotiate this contract, I, I did hear about teacher reimbursement. I have a great interest in that. I did introduce a bill. Uh, it is uh, in committee. What would the amount be, <clears throat> do you think, um, uh, if you can tell me, um, regarding your expectation for teachers uh, to be reimbursed under your contract with the SRC? Uh, currently, there is a $100 per teacher reimbursement for uh, supplies that, um, for money that teachers spend for supplies and other uh, things for the classroom. Uh, my conversations with a number of members, I have heard uh, teachers, for the most part, run the gamut, uh, and it depends upon what they're teaching, from uh, about $300 up to, uh, I remember clearly having a good conversation with the art teacher at Girls High, who spends $5,000 because he's buying art supplies and they're not cheap and he wants to make sure that the girls have everything that they need in order to do um, the artwork and certainly the um, 
paper that he buys, or I'm calling it paper, but it's posters, I'm sure, uh, that's just a lot more expensive and the different kinds of um, tools that you need in order to do an effective art lesson in a high school. Is the uh, SRC willing to reimburse teachers up to $5,000? No. Um, I introduced a bill um, that would create a teacher's reimbursement fund that would reimburse teachers up to $5,000. <clears> and um, uh, that bill is in committee. Do you support that bill or not? I haven't read the bill. I do know that um, some of our teachers came and they did testify during the hearing. Uh, and um, certainly, I agree that there needs to be an increase in the um, reimbursement for supplies for teachers, beyond a doubt, there needs to be. Uh, Chairman, I, if I could make a final point, I know the bell has rung. The, um, the administration does oppose the teachers fund at this point in time. They would prefer that it be incorporated into the fund for Philadelphia schools. Which administration are you uh, referring to, the city the, or the oh, district? Oh, I'm sorry, the city administration, Office of Education or something. Um, I'm sorry, I don't mean like something. I should know the title, but just escapes me for a second. Um, <clears throat> my disagreement with them is that the fund for Philadelphia schools funds many things, and as we look at um, the impending deficit of the SRC, $700 million that has to be dealt with, uh, they have not, up until now, made teacher reimbursement a issue or a priority. And I don't know that if it, they run into other priorities that will remain important to them. Second of all, I don't think they're anywhere near the numbers that you just talked about and the testimony that I received from a teacher who spent $3,000 of her own money. Uh, and so I do think that we should have a teacher's reimbursement fund that could be funded by private corporations, state government, or any other methodology um, which has a board of former teachers to make those decisions. Um, and. Uh, I would uh, ask you to please take a look at that legislation. Uh, we did receive very favorable testimony from the retired teachers, uh, president, former president, and other teachers themselves. Uh, I would hope that no teacher would have to spend their own money for fundamental and necessary school supplies, but in reality they do. And I would like to ensure that we at least try to create some system outside of the current SRC, which we can ensure that there's money to reimburse teachers. In addition, it would not be subject to uh, maintenance of effort, which is problematic whenever we give money to the SRC to give to the teachers. We can have a separate fund. But please look at that. I would love to have that discussion with you. I will do that. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you, Chairwoman. Thank you very much. If there are no further questions, we can move on um, with our folks who are here, who've been here this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Will the clerk read?